Hello, this is Carol Summerfield, Executive Director of the History Center of Lake Forest and Lake Bluff, and this is the Lake Forest Podcast. Outstanding, outstanding. Welcome to the Lake Forest Podcast, a podcast about the lovely city of Lake Forest, featuring topics like local news, sports, music, people, food, and history. My name is Pete. And we have Carol Summerfield from the History Center of Lake Forest, Lake Bluff. Before we get to Carol, we got to pay the bills. We have a sponsor for the show, Dakota Insurance. They've got your back. Why? Because that's what friends are for. Dakota Insurance handles all your residential and commercial insurance needs. Get a quote now at dakotainsurancegroup.com. Ask for Pam. Don't ask for Scoo. Ask for Pam. Okay, one of the goals of the podcast is to shed light on local establishments. And today we are joined by Carol Summerfield, Executive Director, History Center of Lake Forest, Lake Bluff. In that order, History Center. Let's chat with Carol and see what's going on at the History Center. Carol, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. It's been really a delight the last couple of shows. Glad to be back. Oh, you're all over the place with us. It was about a month ago we had you on introducing uh, you. You know, we got new people moving in all the time. I don't want to regurgitate the same stuff from the last show, but we should clue people on that are just moved in or just listened to the show. Tell us about the History Center of Lake Forest, Lake Bluff. Well, so we are located at 509 East Deer Path. We are a free public museum and archive that covers community history for both Lake Forest and Lake Bluff. We're open Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday afternoons. We're going to start being open Saturday afternoons as well with this weekend. And we are open by request as well. So if you want to come in and do some research and check out the archives, if you'd like to just pop by, give us a call or just come on by one of those afternoons that we're open and you can tour around. We have walking tours of the city. We have um, free lectures, Zoom lectures. We have on-site events. We are a festival of opportunity to learn and meet people here in Lake Forest. Now, is there a special knock on the door there or you just walk in or? Just stand in the parking lot, yell my name. <laughs> okay, got it. Okay. So what's going on? I hear something about maps, Carol. Talk to Great. me about maps. So, you know, one of the most exciting parts of being in this building, we've been, uh, you know, a, a live museum for two and a half years before that 50 years of being the historical society. And, um, and one of the things that we've been doing is really making a point of building exhibits that really help showcase both our collections and then the history of both village, um, the village and the um, city of Lake Bluff and Lake Forest. So this exhibit is built around the fact that we actually have one of the largest collections of Lake County maps, apparently anywhere. And you know, one of the goals is to start digitizing them so that people who are doing um, any research on suburbanization or immigration or any sort of um, you know, evaluation that should include Lake County, that they've got the access to that. Um, we've had a great partnership with the Newberry Library and with the um, Chicago History Museum, both of whom have very, very strong map collections for Cook County. But Lake County's got sort of a dearth of availability. So the thought was, well, let's not only pull that forward and show that, but let's talk about why maps matter. What's the story that maps tell and why should anyone care? And it's fascinating. And I realize I can nerd out on a lot of subjects, but- Nerd you know, away. So, oh my gosh. So, you know, there are a lot of aspects to the, to the stories maps tell, particularly when you look at them over time. And so in this exhibit, we're focusing on four basic themes, city planning and city development. Right, so you got your first whatever 100 people, 200 people up there, and then all of a sudden you got 900 people, and then the next thing you know, you got 2,000 people. What are you doing as a city to make that work? And so we look at it from both planning and then infrastructure. And then the second part of it is, and, and this is one of my personal passion areas, it's looking at the geology of the land, it's looking at why here. Why specifically did anybody arrive here and go, this looks good, calling it a home? Right, what were the driving forces? And so we've got a whole thing in the exhibit that talks about sort of the geology and the terrain of the land and both what it was and then how it shifted and how you know humans have influenced the way the landscape is um, designed and managed. Then we move into 
sort of who's here, the cultural implications, what can you see through maps, business districts, you can look at, we have great maps. Again, Lake Forest particularly has a really interesting history of looking at the massive estates. Armour's estate was so big, he had a train that went to it. That goes and it becomes subdivided and then becomes subdivided again. And so in that process, you know, maps tell us that story. So some of our early maps are literally like Armour's house, you know, Insul's <laughs> house. Like it's literally like not even a block of land. It's just like, that's them, their name. And so you can sort of look at the evolution of Lake Forest and Lake Bluff through how maps were even labeled. And then the last part, which is one of my sort of personal favorites, and that's how maps are used as a marketing tool. And it's been done for a hundred years where maps are propaganda. And they're really fun things when you start looking at those propagandistic maps. So just little tidbits that I, I love, you know, before we got to the U.S. highway system where we were numbering it, they were named. And I, and I don't know if we touched on this the last time you and I talked, but... I don't think so. Yeah, so the Lincoln Highway, which was the first transcontinental highway, was neither transcontinental nor highway-ish. And so the way it worked was you got the Lincoln Highway Association, which still exists today, and I think they're a more professional organization. They're like, hey, you want to be on our map? Yeah, that's going to cost you. And so literally, you know, you're like, yeah, Pete's Barber Shop and Grill is going to be on the map for the Lincoln Highway. And they would literally reroute the map so that it went by Pete's Barber Shop and Grill. And so one of the, my favorite statistics about that was Utah, there was a hundred extra miles of travel across Utah because so many of them were willing to pony up to get on the map. So yeah. it wasn't even the most direct path from Chicago to LA. It was just the one that paid the most. That's insane. So, yeah, so we've got maps that sort of show that we've got some of the old markers. I mean, it's it's a really interesting history when you look at how that, you know, was how, how people use maps to market. And for us locally, it was the circle tour. You know, the connection of the idea that you can drive all the way around Lake Michigan. There's been some variation of that for probably 90 years, but Michigan, 20, 30 years, years ago was like, yeah, we're sort of tired of the gravel road parts of that. So let's standardize it and make sure that it's the best route and then systematize it across Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, and um, Illinois. And they did. Huh. So that's the original ways, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so one of the things that we're, it's not going to be, on, we're, we're going to do a series of pop-ups so because there are a lot of stuff where this it's too fragile to keep out for five months. And so what we'll do is just pull it out for like a week at a time every couple of weeks. And one of them is the old triptych. So I don't know if you're old enough to remember the triptych from AAA, where it was yeah. literally a flip book and somebody sat there with a marker and, and said, this is the route you're taking. And, um, and we've got some of those that we're going to show because those were the original ways where it'd be like eat here. But last night in our in our lecture series that we started for this exhibit, we had um, uh, uh, Jim Ackerman from the Newberry Library, who's the head of their maps collection. And he had photos of what was even before triptychs where somebody had produced a photo book in the 1920s that literally is a picture of all the dirt roads and they had drawn on it, turn here. So you literally <laughs> could hold the book, look up and see whether or not you're at the gas station you're supposed to turn at. Oh, we need to, we got to do something like that uh, for the center. What, uh, let's see, uh, we'll put it at the Shell station because there's one gas station uh, here. And then we can put it at uh, Costco in, in, in the Medawa. <laughs> and then uh, we, we can go around and we can get Joe from Chiefs to put his uh, his place on it. And there's only one, two, two spots on the map, Carol. That, that's, that's a great funny. idea, thinking, you're thinking. <laughs> That and a, uh, we could do a little tr uh, uh, treasure hunt. Not a treasure hunt, but what do you call that? Uh, scavenger. Uh, scavenger, scavenger hunt. Scavenger hunt, yeah. Oh, the ideas are abounding. How, how long is uh, the ex exhibit? Do you even call it an exhibit? What do you call it? Yeah, it's a special exhibit. It will be up okay. from uh, tonight through probably um, early November. 
And then we'll take it down. And then the next exhibit that's going up after that is going to be on the history of travel from Lake Forest and Lake Bluff to the rest of the world and how it changed over time. But this exhibit will be up for a while. But like I said, the, the, you know, if you're not a member or you're not on our mailing list, come on, go on to lflbhistory.org to sign up because then you'll get early notices about the fact that these pop-ups are coming. Um, we've got the potential for a really exciting one in September, but it's not completely done. So we're going to not, um, I'm not going to share it in, for risk of jeopardizing oh. it, but there's going to be a big event here in November and uh, September that should be very exciting. Oh, you going to break it here? You're going to break it here? Come on now. Just you're getting the news. I'm embargoing it until I tell you. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, you'll give me all the links and uh, whatever pictures. We'll have it in the podcast notes below, Carol. Oh, man, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay. Anything else on the exhibit, Carol? No, I think, you know, we've got a couple of really interesting early maps. One was when they thought the line of Illinois would be below Chicago. And then in true Chicago um, fashion, there was a lot of lobbying in order to make sure Chicago was included in Illinois and not in Wisconsin. And then we've got another map, both of which are on loan from one of our board members, Dick Lipton, amazing collection of maps. And um, the other one is this fascinating map that was drawn by an Italian of the Illinois area in like 1775, never having set foot in Illinois in 1775. And so he based it on other people's maps. And my favorite part of that map are the mountains of Waukegan. <laughs> the mountains of Waukegan. <laughs> They're drawn on there and everything. <laughs> so if it's on a map, so man, it must be true. So, so I forgot to ask, like, who funds the the outfit there? Like, where do you get the money from? How can the community help you? So we are a um, private institution. We do not get city funding. Um, we um, thrive on membership and private donors. And um, the membership is a growth engine for us. We love having members. And like I said, there are huge benefits that come out of being a membership, being a member besides being um, early in the know on things that are going on and getting discounts on any of the um, events for which there is a charge. Um, you have the ability, if you're at the silver level and above, to get um, travel opportunities. We've partnered with an organization called the um, Museum Travel Alliance and they have experiential travel all over the world. So one of the trips that booked really, really quickly was apparently a private luxury train that goes from um, the middle of Japan up to the upper peak. And it is only like 30 people. And usually, you know, Americans don't get to ride on it. And it was one there where we were able to provide that opportunity for our guests and our members to, if they wanted to, you know, pony up to do that amazing trip, they can do it. Okay. So I need that link too. Oh man, this is going to be a big, big, a lot of notes for, uh, off this short podcast, Carol. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? What's anything going on uh, for you this weekend besides uh, besides the maps exhibit? Um, I don't. I think we might have a Alaska tour. Let's go look. Nope, that is. Um next week is the Lascaro State Tour. So if you want to go um, wander okay. around and see a pretty amazing um, estate, um, that is through the History Center as well. Oh, and then yeah. Art Miller is actually going to be speaking in a couple of weeks on one of our free Zoom programs, talking specifically about some of the early map stories from um, here. So if you're a fan of arts and art class, this is me giving him a full hour to be full on art. The two of you together is just magical. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the Lake Forest podcast. Please give us five stars on Apple Podcasts and smash that like button on Facebook, Instagram, and follow us on Twitter. Carol, thanks so much again for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And I look forward to seeing you all at the museum. Oh, yes. Let us know what you like to hear about on the upcoming shows. Again, I'm Pete. It can be reached at Pete at LakeForestPodcast.com. All the links will be in the podcast notes below. Everybody have a great weekend. Cue the band. <laughs>